Hi, old guys, <laughs> vintage divers. Alec Pierce Scuba, vintage scuba. Okay, this is a health waste catalog. Now, anybody who's been a vintage diver for any length of time has heard the name Healthways. Healthways was a big company. In fact, at one time, Healthways, I'm pretty sure, was the biggest company in, in the world, and certainly in North America. Bigger than U.S. Divers, Aqualung, bigger than Voigt, who was a big company. Healthways was very, very large. Interesting enough, even though Healthways closed up shop in about 19, uh, oh, <laughs> I don't know, I have no idea, 60, in the early 60s, uh, they're still around. Yeah, you see, Healthways made a lot of things. They made fitness equipment, they made sports equipment, they made uh, skis, skates, all kinds of stuff for outdoors and scuba. Big, big, big company in scuba. But uh, eventually, for a variety of reasons, uh, none of which uh, there are any uh, uh, problem in regards to the scuba equipment, the scuba equipment was excellent, but for many reasons, uh, they closed. And uh, they became another company, a company that you're very familiar with. A lot of people find this hard to believe, but it's quite true that when uh, Healthways closed, this is their 1971 catalog, so it must have been the 70s. When Healthways closed, they were taken over by the uh, new CEO of Healthways. And uh, he bought everything. His name was um, Gustav Davali. And uh, he opened a company with everything he had, uh, everything he got from Healthways. He opened a company that you're all familiar with. Yeah, Scuba Pro. You see how big Healthways was? When Healthways closed, it became Scuba Pro. Still here today, it's still a very, very large and well-respected company. And when Scuba Pro took over, they, uh, they acquired all the Healthways stuff. Uh, Healthways itself was a big, big company. That catalog, that pretty color catalog is from 1971. This is from 1961. Yeah, yeah, long before, 10, 10 years in the 60s was a long, long time. A lot of things changed in 10 years. So here's their catalog, a whole bunch of masts and snorkels and, and fins, and, and eventually you'll get to the, there's the duck feed, Kevin, we were talking about earlier. Eventually you get to their regulator, and they have a lot of regulators. They had a lot of regulators. They had a two-host regulator called, are you ready for this? Scuba. And that was the name of the regulator. Oh, you want to buy a scuba regulator? Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you. And it was a two-host. So they have here the uh, Scuba Star, very well known, very inexpensive, very inexpensive uh, regulator, good solid regulator, but cheap. And uh, so a lot of rental schools used it, a lot of new divers bought one, get going. And the Scuba Air is a famous name, and there's their two-hose regulator called the Scuba. <laughs> yeah, so they were all in there, and that was interesting because <clears throat> their first regulators were unique in many ways, not the least of which I have one here. I actually have a scuba star here in really nice condition. They were unique in a lot of ways, and you're going to say, wow, wow, yeah, yeah, it's true. So you take a look at this uh, regulator, the second stage in particular. It's uh, all brass. There's no plastic here. Even the exhaust, you see that? The exhaust it's a solid brass tube. And something, purge valve on the front, and so on. First stage was very simple. A little old uh, unbalanced, ordinary standard uh, piston, first stage. One moving part, super reliable. And this regular was quite cheap, 19 bucks. You can buy this complete brand, spank a new regular for about 19 bucks. It's a tilt valve. If you've seen some of my earlier uh, videos about different types of valves, you'll know what a tilt valve is. Not made anymore. It hasn't been made since the 60s for a variety of reasons. Uh, and, and it had a, neat, a couple of neat features. These little spring clips on the front. I don't know if you can zoom in on that tall, Kevin. Can you see that? Can you get in closer? So to take this second stage apart, you would just squeeze these two legs together. A spring clip would pop. Front pops off. Diaphragm pops out. You rinse the whole thing. Rinse the sand and the salt. Out, put it back together. Make new. Serviced. Done. Just like that. Yeah, pretty neat. So that's a good old scuba star. They're 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 basic. They're uh, they're uh, entry level regulator cheap. The scuba air that I just mentioned became quite famous because it was it was uh, uh, very very rugged. The second stage is identical, almost almost completely identical. Uh, if you look at it again, you can see the similarities. Same first stage or same uh, same cover, same spring clips, same all chromed exhaust on it. For any, uh, but the first stage was quite a bit different. It was very very slick. Uh, 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 Healthways had some very innovative, very very modern, in fact ultra modern, almost too modern uh, features. That they introduced with their regulators, maybe one reason for their demise, they, they were too far ahead. You take a look here, you'll notice, <clears throat> certainly compared to the 
scuba star, the scuba star, you see the first stage, you got a yoke on it. Pretty Sanders stuff, just like today. Look at this, look at this uh, scuba air. Yeah, look at that. It's got a beautiful internal yoke screw. There it is right there. You unscrew that, the dust cap comes out, you see? And there's your, there's your yoke screw inside. Nice, smooth edges out here. So when you put this onto the tank, there's nothing to catch. Yeah, Cal uh, Healthways was in, in California. And uh, most of their customers were in California. There were kelp divers and swimming through kelp. If you've ever done that, if you haven't done it, do it. It's incredible. Swimming through kelp, it's quite easy to, for the kelp to catch on things on your body. So you don't need any sharp edges. Well, Healthways had this very first internal yoke screw on there. It was pretty neat. Nice, slick, very heavy, heavy chrome. Regulator. And then they also had some other models that were pretty exciting. They were one of the very first to come out with a regulator mounted reserve. Yeah, now you may know in the old days before we had SPGs and so on, you may know that, uh, that uh, all divers had a reserve. They had a reserve valve on the tank, you see? And the reserve simply meant, for you, those of you who have not seen my earlier videos, simply meant that when you ran out of air, you weren't really out of air. Because the reserve mechanism is called spring-loaded reserve, spring-loaded, it, it hold, held some of the air back. Uh, about 300 pounds, about 300 psi, uh, not very much, but enough to get you to the surface. So when you when you, when you ran out of air, no pressure gauge, remember, she ran out of air. Whoop! You reach back. There's a rod on this. You pull that down, and you got another four or five minutes of air, enough to get to the surface or signal your buddy, whatever. Well, Healthways was one of the very first to put a reserve mechanism on the regulator. Well, why would they do that? You could have reserves on the tanks. Well, there's two reasons for that. First of all, a regular valve on a tank, a K valve, had no reserve, just, a, just an on-off valve, were cheap. They were cheap, like eight bucks. A reserve, a J, J reserve, re, spring-loaded reserve on a valve almost doubled the price. Yeah, they jumped up to about 14 bucks. So a lot of divers, and that was a lot of money. I mean, to you, to you today, it was seven or eight dollars. Back then, it was a lot of money. Seven or eight dollars was a day's wages in the 50s and 60s. So a lot of divers would not buy a J reserve. So having a J reserve on the regulator gave them a reserve. The other reason it was valuable is that if you traveled at all back in those days, and you went to, say, Mexico or other islands or to Europe, very few of the tanks had reserves. You know, they, they just didn't have reserves. They had plain tanks with a plain J. So you could travel with your regulator that had a spring-loaded reserve on it, and you had a reserve. So that was a great idea to have a reserve on there. This particular one is called the Scuba J. Yeah, they had the Scuba Air which was a good solid regulator, a little nicer than the star, a few extra features. If you wanted the J, well, you bought the Scuba Air J. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, companies were pretty smart back then, yeah. Eventually, a little later, they came up with another really, really innovative uh, idea. And one, one that I have often said to myself, gosh, and they should still have that around. It would, it would still be valuable today, okay? So this regulator is quite rare. This is the Scuba Air, same name, 300. The Scuba Air 300. Why is it called the 300? Well, that's very simple. You see on this <clears throat> regulator, we'll compare that just quickly here to the first stage of the, if I can find it here, first stage of the star. Where did that go, Kev? You keep dropping things on me. Yeah, compare that to the first stage of the star, okay? So you can see that they're similar in some ways. They got a yoke screw and all that kind of stuff. But the hose, you see the hose is attached here, and there's this long metal tube in here on the, on the, on the uh, Scuba Air 300. This long metal tube. What the heck is that? Well, this is where the, one of the very first versions. They, they looked better and worked better later. This is one of the very first versions of a sonic reserve. Yeah, yeah. Sonic reserve. I mentioned that a reserve meant that it held back some air so that you could have a little extra air left in your tank after your air ran out. Well, this doesn't do that. This doesn't do that. No, no. It doesn't reserve any. But when you're swimming along, you die, buddy, and you run out of air, what you get is <laughs> 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 
sonic. Yeah, you get a rapping sound inside of this. And of course, this metal and it's on the tank, and that sound can be heard for 100 yards. <laughs> All your buddies know you ran out of air. Oh, that Kevin, that air hog, he's out of air again. Ah, damn it, the dive's over. But it was a pretty neat idea. Yes, a, a, a mechanism that lets you know, makes a noise when you're getting low on air. Pretty neat, huh? Now, this is a later version of that same regular. This is the 300 again, or the 300. But look at how they've improved it. So here, here's the first one. Here's the first 300, okay? And here's the new 300, here. So there's the old one. It's got the old yoke screw on it. It's got this long, not very pretty tube stuck on there. And it's just an ordinary square old regulator. But the later version, oh, look at that. It's got the internal yoke that I mentioned, Beautifully smooth, heavily chrome, and even the reserve mechanism now is smooth and chrome and so on. This you can be proud of. Put it on there and away you go. So they made some, some really interesting uh, uh, regulators back in those days. Later, some of these innovations disappeared. As I mentioned already, the internal yoke screw, a great idea, but it slowly disappeared for good reason. And, uh, and, and the sonic reserve disappeared. Divers didn't want it. Now, I don't know if they didn't want it because that regular cost seven or eight dollars more than, than, than scuba air without it, or if they were embarrassed because all oh, their buddies knew about it. I don't really know why it disappeared, but it did. And eventually, the regulators became more like what we have today. Regulator body, plastic knob, but you will notice that this plastic knob, unlike the one that comes up like a T, is smooth. So without having that internal mechanism, you still have a smooth regulated body. So it's not likely to get caught on fishing line or kelp. And the second stage uh, changed a bit too. Looks very similar, right? But instead of that big strong metal clip, now it has a nice neat plastic clip. You simply insert a screwdriver right in there, go pop, and it pops apart. You can clean a whole second stage, put it back together. So they've made a little nicer, little neater in there as well. Oh, oh, and you notice that yeah, rubber, rubber exhaust, just like we had today, rubber exhaust or plastic exhaust. -y. So they did change over the years. And so that eventually, they, uh, 71, 10 years later, they had a whole bunch of regulators, but they look like the one I just showed you. Yeah, but that big knob, Rubber exhaust on most of them. But they were beautiful regulators. They helped out a lot of stuff. Big, big company. You know, knives, lots of knives. And they were the very first, one of the very first in the world, one of the very first to have a decompression meter. And this is not even the first version. There was an earlier version of this, which is extremely rare. Nobody I know has that earlier version. I've seen one, but, uh, but let me show you this. What do you think of that? There you go. <laughs> That's that submarine. There it is, yeah. Healthways was the first to have submarines. You could buy submarines from their catalog. What do you think about that? Uh, and I want to show you this too, because this has certainly changed. You could buy parts for it. Yeah, so if you needed a filter or, or something broke on it, the exhaust or a new diaphragm, you would simply go to the catalog and say, yeah, I need to order a, a 1301-2. Diaphragm plate, and the shop owner, I got three in stock, come and get one. And he would sell you the parts. Again, back then in the 50s and 60s, we had to fix our own regulators, yeah. You don't see that anymore in the catalogs. They don't have a parts list with prices on it. Anyway, there was a lot of fun back then diving, and there were some great companies. I may talk a little bit about Voigt, another very, very famous company. Uh, uh, their gear was used all over. The Voigt gear was used on Sea Hunt a famous TV series. Maybe I'll do a little session on Voigt as well. But there you go. A little bit about health waste and their incredible uh, developments in single hose regulators. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. Hope there's something for you. Take care. Talk to you soon. Alec Pierce, Scuba, Vintage Scuba.